Good morning. Jesus is Lord. Thank God the word works. We've been talking about how the kingdom belongs to you. Just like going into a buffet restaurant and you can pick up anything that you want. And it's not the restaurant's fault if you don't get anything, really. So the kingdom has been given to us. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So it's not God's fault if you don't have the promises. And it's not the devil's fault. He has no power. Jesus broke his power. He made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. Hebrews chapter 2, I believe it's verse 14, says that Jesus utterly destroyed the devil. So don't let the devil tell you that he is hindering you in any way. You tell him, you rule over him just like Jesus did. Say, no, it is written. Another thing comes to my mind in Joshua. It says that there were certain tribes of the children of Israel that had not gone in to possess their land. The land had been given to them. The kingdom has been given to you. But yet, just because it was given to them didn't mean they were enjoying the benefits of it. Was it God's fault? No. He said, how long will you, will you be slack to go in and possess that which I have already given to you. He's saying that to his children today. How long are you going to be slack to go in and possess what I have given to you? His son purchased everything. And you know, the Holy Spirit through Paul said, if, G, if God spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, freely, say freely, freely give us all things. In Timothy, he says he giveth us all things richly to enjoy. These are the things from the Father. And the way we receive them is like it says in Hebrews, that we are not to be slothful or lazy, but followers of them who through faith and steadfastness, or consistency or perseverance inherit the promises just because they're promised to you doesn't mean you're going to enjoy them you have to take them and that's where the labor comes in I think sometimes people get the works of the law and the the labor of faith the law of faith mixed up there is a labor in the law of faith but here's where the labor is it says say not in your heart who shall ascend to bring it down to me, or who shall bring him up? But what saith it? The word is nigh you, even in your mouth and in your heart. So how does the word get into your heart? It gets in your heart by speaking that promise. Okay, for instance, you take the promise of, and well, I'll, I'll say this, two of the things that were foremost in God's mind for you to have, brethren, Beloved, I believe above all things, I pray above all things that you prosper and you are in health even as your soul prospers. So that's 3 John uh, 1, I believe, and, or verse 2. And so he said, this is out of the abundance of the heart, God's mouth speaks. So he said above all things, beloved, that he prays that you prosper and be in health. So your prosperity and your health are foremost on his mind. But how are we going to take it? We are going to go to those promises. We're going, every promise stands on its own. Every promise. You take that promise. You put it in your mouth day and night. You speak it. You speak it. You speak it. You speak it. Right now, start saying, by Jesus' stripes I was healed. Even if you feel good, you take the promise so that that word will grow up in you and produce a crop of divine health so that you're never sick all the days of your life. Remember today and always that Jesus is Lord. Put it in your mouth. Thank God the word works.